How many times would you say we have sat down at our respective chairs over the past two weeks? Lights on, cameras running, run down, ready to record an episode. 3,500? Well, no. No? I, I don't think it's been might have, might quite that many. Up. Might yeah, have rounded up a little. Yeah, you carried a few zeros there. It's been a lot of times, I'll tell you Maybe that three much. To, that's kind of cool because sometimes the offseason can be boring. This one is not. They are making moves. Players are coming. Players are going. There's a new AD. There's that lifetime contract. It's It's been fascinating. The last couple of weeks have been really, really interesting, and there's no signs of slowing down yet. And we don't have time to get to all of that in one episode, or it would be an hour episode, and we're not going to do that. Plus, we have all off season, so let's take our time. We decided that instead of trying to encapsulate everything and jam-pack it into one 10-minute video, we would sort of section it out player by player, event by event, and give every little thing that's taken place their full attention starting today. And the first point of focus is not a thing, it is a person. And that person has a name. And that name has a nickname. Big Cam Martin. Welcome to Basketball Friends. Yeah, it started in about high school, by freshman year. Everybody started calling me that. How I, big were you? I always had um, oh, another Cam around my team, too, it seemed like. So it's always Big Cam, Little Cam. Oh, nice. How big were you freshman year you know, of high school? Uh, I was like 6'8". Yeah. So. Me too. I was, probably, I was probably a little bigger. I was probably like two, probably 250 or so. A little, little chubby. Wow. Yeah. My advice to you would be to really go all in on that and make that like your trademark, your your namesake that everybody knows you by, like um, like Big Country, right? You have Big Country, Bryant Reeves. Um, so you got Big Dave on the team already. Let's not forget that. Yeah, that's true. That could be... Huh. You right. guys may have to fight over big supremacy. Yeah. Jeff Boshi, your coach, he said that you may not wow anybody in the weight room, but your country's strong. I've never been huge, like going in there squatting more than everybody or just throwing a ton of weight around. Um, I came on bench. I've always been able to bench in the 300s. I feel like on the court when it comes, it's just a different type of, of strength. Um, I don't ever really get pushed around on the block. I can go wherever. I want to go with it, and uh, it's kind of hard getting me out of, out of where I want to be. Does it at all feel weird, like just looking back at your basketball career and sort of wondering, like, how did I end up, like, signing up to go play for Bill Self and play for Kansas? Yeah, it, it definitely does. Um, I think if you would have asked me and my family, we would have told you all along, this is where I should be, playing at the highest level. Uh, we always believed it. I just kind of had a, a tough break with getting injured in high school, wrong wrong time, probably the worst time possible. That set me back a lot. And then with transferring, uh, they were like going to Division two, so I didn't have to sit out. I kind of didn't get the exposure I thought I, I could have gotten when I major out of high school and stuff like that. But me and my family, we've always believed um, this is the level I should play and be playing at. So it was, it was awesome getting that call from Coach Self and hearing somebody else say, I think I should be playing at this level besides my inner circle. So before you ended up, and you mentioned it, that before you ended up at Missouri Southern, I know a, a brief stint at, at Jacksonville State, and then you end up at Missouri Southern, and what was your sort of mentality and mindset about basketball and about your basketball career at that point? Honestly, when I first went there, it was an ego thing for me. Um, going to Division Two, I know there's kind of like this, oh, Division Two isn't – as good as Division One, I, I thought the same thing before I went there. But actually playing in it and being able to play in a mid-major Division One versus playing high-quality Division Two basketball, I think it's, I mean, there's not a big difference at all, in my opinion. And I think there's multiple Division Two teams that can handle their own against Division One teams. So now that you are headed to Kansas, like, and you look back at that sort of full journey, like, what do you, how does a guy who is basically uh, dealing with this ego trip of going to play Division trip 2 and you're not really sure if that's where you want to be. How do you get from that point to now heading off to Lawrence, Kansas to play for one of the most historic programs in the history of college basketball? How do you get from point A to point B there? Just a lot of, a lot of hard work, um, spending time in the gym, just constantly getting better, not being complacent with where I was. Um, it was definitely a grind. I put in a, 
a lot of a lot of summers I missed out on a lot of things um, that people like hang out with friends and stuff like that because basketball was my main priority and I think just not getting sick of the process and just knowing my time was going to come and everything happens for a reason at first I thought the whole COVID thing was going to ruin my senior year um, I was really messed up our junior year with the season being cut short and everything but now I was talking with somebody the other day I was like this might be the best thing that ever happened to me getting this extra year back and being able to transfer and go to the biggest stage of basketball and do like that I could do Kim when, when you committed you know it, it caught a lot of people off guard up here especially right I mean it's it's not every day that that Kansas takes a D2 transfer uh, it doesn't happen almost ever so yeah y- you saw that right I mean you you, you whether it's Twitter or, or message boards or wherever you're seeing it I mean you, you saw people questioning who, who is this guy what, what are we doing I mean did that fuel you did how, how, how'd you take that I mean was it entertaining did it did it make you laugh did you understand it what what was your thought process when you saw all that stuff you know I, I definitely get it uh just from like fans don't have that perspective to, to watch enough and understand like the level uh division two basketball I mean you hear I heard when I was in division two I thought the same thing like why am I going to play division two basketball right it can't be any good but that's why Coach Self gets paid the big bucks, I guess, because he, he <laughs> finds the right guys, and uh, he obviously liked what he saw. Brett Ballard, former KU player, coaches at Washburn. You guys uh, you guys did a little bit of a number on them last year in, or two years ago in the tournament. That's, that's the game you hit nine threes, right? Yep. Yeah, you remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know he remembers, and, and one of my best friends was on his staff then, and he texted me as soon as, as – soon as, uh, people found out that you were coming here and he said the dude is legit like I I saw him play he hit nine threes against us he you know so when you think like Washburn and and you think Northwest Missouri right and then obviously you guys are are a team to be reckoned with I mean does it help you think that maybe in this area the D2 scene's pretty good and and maybe people will know a little bit more about it because that's where you're coming from and you've played against those teams and been in that area yeah, I think this year, uh, me coming to Kansas is going to be a real eye-opener, and it's going to help Division two basketball out a lot. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, if you look a couple years ago, Northwest Missouri played Duke, and they lost by six points um, at Duke. There was a point guard from Northwest Missouri scored 30-plus points. I mean, there's some re- there's some legit players at the Division two level, and I think, um, I mean, everybody's different. Some guys bloom sooner. Some guys take some couple years to get to college, and they get better. Um, it's just different, so... I think it's, it's going to be a surprise to some people. Let's talk about the nine three-pointers, man. I mean, like, look, five's a lot, right? Six uh-huh. is a lot. Nine is ridiculous. I'm sure you remember that game. What 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 can you tell us about that one? I've always uh, – I, I kind of went into the game on shooting in a little slump. Um, and I told my coach before the game, I was messing with him. I was like, if the first one goes in, I'm hitting 10. Wow. And I saw that first one go in. And then, I mean, just, that's how it's always been for me when I see that first one go in, my confidence. I always have confidence, but when the first one goes in, it's it's going to be a good day. Are you a Kevin Love, Luca Garza hybrid? Like, how, how do you describe your game and your skill set? Um, so when I was a little younger, I always tried watching a lot of Kevin Love. But now, um, I watch a lot of Jokic kind of with his ability just to be able to pass, rebound, defend, score, I mean, just everything. Are you a pretty decent passer, at least in your eyes? Yeah, in my eyes, I definitely, especially, I mean, if you watch enough games, you can see I got double and triple teamed almost every game. Um, So I have to be able to pass a little bit uh, out of that. What do you think that's going to be like? Because I think the first question a lot of people would have for somebody making the leap that you are is, what do you have to change about your game now knowing you're playing against different competition, but you were the guy for what three seasons where every single defense had to zero in on, on you. Do you feel like there are going to be opportunities for things to be opened up a little bit more for you once you get to Kansas? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I was actually talking with Coach Bush for the other day, and I told him that uh, I don't I don't see anybody being able to guard me one on one. I'm excited to be able to play one on one because. Uh, I think I had two games all of college that um, a team played me one-on-one and it was 
my career high 54 and the next game we played the same team they played me one-on-one -on -one 45. <laughs> um, so yeah i'm definitely excited to be able to get some one-on-one -on -one matchups but i don't know how long it'll last hey cam that was nice of you to not name the team too that, that was nice of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh wow that's big time man so so when you are when you are defended one-on-one -on -one, What's your what's your plan of attack? Do you want to take people down low, or do you want to bring them outside, or 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 do you just kind of feel whatever whatever they don't want, and you give them that? Yeah, it kind of whatever they don't want. I, I'm I'm kind of good at telling like my guys bigger and a little slower. Then I'll try and set more screens and play out of pick and pops and just pick them apart like that. Or if they want to put somebody that's a little quicker and smaller, not as strong, not as bold, down in the post, and uh, just kind of take people's weaknesses and go at them. I got a I got a quote here from you. I think this is a tweet from you, from uh, from last month. Don't worry, it's nothing embarrassing or anything. Um, <laughs> athleticism is cool, but you need bucket getters. Would you care to uh, explain what you meant by that? I was just watching some of these uh, NCAA tournament games, and there was some some upsets, and I felt like the the teams getting the higher seeds. They they had a lot of athletes. But they were struggling scoring the basketball. They were having trouble putting, uh, making shots, hitting threes. The spacing on the floor was just bad. And uh, I think you need dudes like the, the guy from ORU, the, the point guard. Yeah. You need some guys like that that can just put the ball in the hole. That's what they do. Uh, I, I feel like sometimes people see somebody and like, oh, this kid's really athletic. He dunks the basketball. He's great. And he is, but they also need people that can then shoot, space the floor, do different things. Is that you? You, are you a bucket getter? You put the ball in? Yeah, I, I feel like I do a lot of things, but I can, I can also put the ball, the ball in the bucket. Yeah, nice. <laughs> hey, that's what we, I mean, how many times we talked about that last year, Matt? We talked about what was this team missing? A bucket getter. <laughs> we yeah. may have found the you bucket getter. Do. What is your just general hope for what you want to accomplish? What do you see as being you know, your goal and what you want to do during your time at Kansas? Well, I've always wanted to... Uh, get a conference championship, win that. So KU has, has a history of doing that, but also want to win a national championship. Uh, just being able to play in March Madness has always been one of my dreams. That was a big part of me wanting to use this extra year and not try and go pro, was to be able to play in March Madness and experience that. So just winning championships is my goal. That's the yeah. company line, man. That is the company line for the University of Kansas. You're, you're gonna fit right in.